Ducks fans, are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Mike Walsh, along with my co-host, Eddie Richard. And we have, well, hopefully an entertaining show for you. The, uh, the Ducks are, uh, haven't really improved since our last podcast. We, the last one was called The Downward Ducks. And uh, they've been on the uh, homestand. They lost the, the next two games against uh, Edmonton and Detroit, unfortunately. So we're going to dive into those games. But we do have a lot of other topics this week that have come up to talk about. Uh, we have a poll question up there about whether or not it's time to panic, basically. And that's what the show is about. If the Ducks should make a trade or should we write off the season. Eddie and I will share our thoughts on that. Uh, we have some uh, news about Don Cherry. Uh, Kovalchuk's in the news as well. Kind of a surprise. No, not really. Eddie and I didn't think it was going to work out. So we'll go into that. Uh, plus some other things. So we'll, we'll get with the homestand at first, Eddie. Uh, if you listened to the show last time, we were pretty upset. The Ducks lost to uh, Chicago and Minnesota, two subpar teams. They continued the homestand against Edmonton. And Edmonton's a red-hot team. They came into Honda Center uh, 11-5-2. And And the Ducks got some more bad news before the game. Hampus Lindholm placed on the IR lower, lower body injury. Sorry, I can't talk right now. But he had a lower body injury, and which was kind of a nagging injury from... You know, in the beginning of the season. So he's out. The Ducks did bring Mahura back up. He was with the goals for a little bit. So they went into this game without Lindholm, without Manson. And basically this game was a disaster. Uh, uh, Nugent Hopkins and McDavid ran wild in this one. Uh, They both got goals in the opening period. Uh, Raquel did have a nice backhand goal in there. The Ducks were down 2-1 after the first. And then uh, Nugent Hopkins scored again in the second. Cassian also scored. Edmonton was up 4-1. Uh, Max Jones did finally get on the board uh, this season. You know he did have a goal earlier that was uh, disallowed. But then uh, Connor McDavid scored two more times getting a hat trick. And the Ducks got blown out in this one 6-2. Eddie, uh, I didn't have a lot of confidence going into this game. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, like we said, we've talked on the show before. I'm not a homer. But uh, going in against a red-hot Oilers team... No, no Lindholm or Manson to uh, control the top stars on Edmonton. It showed in this game. Uh, the Ducks actually had uh, more shots on goal. And the five-on play, it wasn't terrible. But they let those guys run wild, Eddie. They got in the slot. They created chances. And they capitalized on those chances when the Ducks uh, didn't. Oh, definitely. You can't give a player like McDavid any time or space because he's going to bury it. Uh, he, he scored a, a beautiful goal. That, that, that second goal he scored overpowering Silverberg and just he made it look so easy it's like man it was amazing it was like yeah you had to appreciate that goal being a hockey fan I, I got frustrated and I kind of knew how this game was going to go in the I guess the the opening minute of the game you have you know McDavid streaking in he hits the post you have Cassian with three attempts consecutive attempts on the goalie before someone decides to go and and barely tap him like hey asking him politely hey can you not hit our goalie like so it's like the way the player Zach Cassian is, he's that gritty kind of player that's going to be in your face. That if you let him just run and gun and without you know giving ice justice, he's going to take that and run with it. And he did. He was just everywhere, making plays, getting in front of the net, and causing havoc. And he ended up scoring a goal too. Like someone like that scores. Um, I didn't have confidence either because uh, one one player he didn't mention. Or I forget them. I forgot to mention was Drysaddle. That guy is. That guy's a beast. The way he plays, it's just oh, I'm just so glad he wasn't going buzzing around and was on fire that game because that score could have went nasty real quick. I did like uh, Max Jones, though. It's good he got a goal, his confidence up, and it was a beautiful goal. Like It was unfortunate that the score, it is what it was. Is it, That goal was a thing of beauty. And then one thing I got irritated was all the 88 Oiler fans throwing their hats on the ice, their free giveaway hats. And then a lot of people that probably didn't know it was you know a military appreciation night and the ducks were giving away hats we're like oh look at all these fans brought their hats to throw out blah 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 and it's like no they got a free hat they just do it back on the ice so like some people made it a big deal not knowing that the ducks gave away you know that free hat but this was a frustrating one but it wasn't 
as frustrating because I kind of expected the, the Ducks to get kind of ran over by this team, especially losing Lindholm. Their best two defensemen are out, and you're going against probably one of the best players in the world. And we did miss Ryan Kessler this game. Like These are the type of games where you miss Ryan Kessler. If you go back to that playoff series, Ryan Kessler was on McDavid like a fly on shit. He would not let him get enough space, and it was getting into his head and was kind of shutting down the best player of the world, like or, you know, of the world right now. Um, so that was really like really missed, and I think the Ducks just gave him way too much time and left him alone. And as you saw, scoring his third goal, he was just wide open and no one covering him, and easily slipped the p- past Gibson. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point too, because I noticed a lot of people were talking about, okay, we don't have Manson. Uh, yeah, Lindholm's out too. So two of our three top guys are out. We just got Fowler. But you bring up a good point. You don't have Kessler this season, and he's been your best shutdown uh, centerman, uh, you know, arguably in the league. Uh, he goes up against the other team's top line night in and night out, and you don't have him uh, the whole year, and, and you really saw it here. So you don't have Manson, Lindholm, and Kessler. You know, there you go. And the, the Ducks... I didn't think they played terrible five on five, but there were a couple moments where the Oilers' chances, most of their uh, scorers and high quality chances, were between the circles in the slot down low in front of Gibson. And that was the difference in this game. The other part, again, too, was the special teams, which we're going to harp on this one as well. The Oilers had four power plays, they scored on two out of four. The Ducks had five power plays and didn't score on any of them. Um, that, that's a killer. Uh, that's kind of been a theme with this team. As their, like I said, their their five on pl- five on five play hasn't been terrible, but when you're getting outworked on special teams like that, I mean that's huge. You, you know, you, you give up two goals, and there you go. You're you're down two goals going into the third period, and uh, you know, like we said, Connor McDavid gets that hat trick, and and yeah, I'm with you on that too. Some of the hats thrown on the ice there. Uh, not sure if that was some Ducks fans or Edmonton fans or a mix, but yeah, that was frustrating, you know, uh, given that it was a giveaway and it was uh, the game to honor uh, the veterans. But um, yeah, it, it was a, it was a disappointing loss. I don't really have much to add to this one, though. I uh, once I heard the news about Lindholm before the game, I just lowered my expectations and. And it's not because I'm not a fan of the Ducks. I still went to the game. I, I was there. It's it's not that uh, I don't cheer for my team. But, you know, I had a temper expectations with those two. Knowing Manson and Lindholm are out. And you got this high-flying uh, Oilers team. And like you mentioned I, I, uh, about Dreisaitl, too. He had four assists in this game. I mean, hello. They, they went wild. And that's what happened. The Ducks had no answer uh, for, the you know, the top six, uh, the Oilers. And not really a shocker, Eddie. Uh, I, I wish it would have been a closer game, but I, I wasn't really surprised at this one. Yeah, same here. Those those Oilers are have a they have a stack team. They have James Neal too. I forgot to mention he's actually surging up and playing a lot better for Edmonton. And I, I personally thought he was done after his uh, his play in Calgary, but he's really you know had a new spark and he's playing well and. Uh, they just have a, a great team, and I mean, if I, I I know it's gonna happen. They'll probably squeak in the playoffs, knowing they're getting bounced in the first round. Good for them, but it just the Ducks don't really have that those kind of caliber players, with the exception of Getzloff and Gibson. I, Gibson's our only superstar elite player. You can say they have they have um, McDavid's a definitely superstar and Drysaddle. Like those two people are, are, are great players, and, and they can make an impact. And then they had. Other players stepping in and, and didn't help that their goaltender was getting lucky too. So just it was just one of those. Uh, yeah, I had the expectation too, and like you said, I'm glad you pointed out. Like you know, it's not like you're you're not a Ducks fan. You just have a realistic expectation on what's going to go on. Like you, you can't expect to to steal games all the time, which people you know get too comfortable with. Oh well, the Ducks still you know beat this team. Like oh yeah, but you know they shouldn't have beat that team. They got lucky here and there. It's just those things, but. I mean, I'm, I'm glad. I, oh, I thought I was glad this game was, like, you know, pushed behind us. And actually, at first, I thought the Ducks would beat this team because it's a harder team, and I thought they would go and just tank and lose to Detroit. But, I mean, they kind of did both. <laughs> well, yeah. So so after this Edmonton game, you're like, hey, 
Detroit's coming to town. They're terrible. They're terrible on you know Last. special teams. Yeah, they're terrible on special teams. They're terrible at scoring. They're terrible at defense. And I did write in the game preview, just like I said against the Chicago game, I said Detroit plays Anaheim tough. And that's exactly what happened in this game. Same thing. Um, the Ducks actually played a very good first period. There was no scoring. The Ducks had some chances. Um, and, and the teams ended up even. And then kind of a theme on this homestand is there's been spurts where the Ducks have scored goals in bunches. You had Silverberg scoring right away. You had Josh Mahura, congrats to him, getting his first NHL goal. The Ducks are up 2-0 early in the second period. You're like, all right, cool. We're going to take out Detroit. No big deal. We got this lead. You know, all is good. Uh, then you see uh, Detroit gets one back. And you're like, okay, you know, 2-1, to one, big deal. Fowler gets a very, very nice goal. Puts the Ducks back up 3-1. to one, And then Detroit responds. And, it, and it's 3-2 to two at the end of the second period. You're like, holy crap. All the stuff going on. In this game, very entertaining game too. By the way, there was a, just a lot of action in this one. So, the Ducks were up three to two, going into the third, and you thought they were going to win this game. You really did. And and at the very end, the last couple minutes, and I wa- rewatched this last couple minutes of this game because a lot of people weighed in on what happened and why the Ducks lost and all this other stuff. And there were a couple penalties called against Anaheim in the final minutes. Uh, it resulted in uh, Larkin getting a power play goal because they had a six on three, which, I mean, if you don't score on a six on three, then you shouldn't be in the NHL, right? So they, they had that and they scored. And then, of course, they scored in overtime. The Ducks lost. So the Ducks went from getting two points with like two minutes to go to tied, then to losing the game in overtime. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in this game that, you know, uh, reviewed plays, controversial goals, controversial penalty calls. Uh, I'll, I, we could start wherever you want, Eddie. Uh, but I'll tell you, this game really pissed me off, for lack of a better term. I was just mad at the end of this game. Uh, I just the Ducks should should have won this game, and I just I had it. I was pissed off, uh, like everybody else. And usually, when the Ducks lose, I turn off my phone because social media goes nuts, and everybody was upset. And you know what? Everybody had a right to be upset. For whatever reason you were upset, whether it was you thought there were bad penalty calls or they played undisciplined or they just flat out blew this game because they did. They had a chance to win this game even with those calls at the end. They didn't do it. They're playing Detroit who, for lack of a better term, sucks. But like I said, they, they for some reason, when they play Anaheim, you know, going back to when they used to be in the Western Conference because they're not anymore, right? They, they always, you know, would get under the duck's skin. So that's the way that this game went. Uh, I mean, the only good thing you could say is, oh, we got a point, whoop de doo But still, it's, it's another loss. It's four losses in a row, Eddie. Uh, there's so much to cover. I'll let you go with whatever you want to cover in this game because there, there's a plenty to talk about in this uh, contest. Yeah, this game was frustrating. This game pissed me off too. Like, I, I'm not drinking for like 28 days this month, so I get to drink on the 25th. There's something personal I'm, I'm doing for myself. But this is one of the games where I I almost went and drank. I went upstairs. My roommates they're watching a I think a basketball game was on. They had a bunch of alcohol and beer, and I was looking at the bottle. He's like, "You can take a shot." I'm like, "Bro, I want to down the whole bottle right now because I'm pissed. Like, just so frustrated. I really thought <laughs> this game was gonna end differently, especially when Getzloff, you know, threw his tantrum and, and really uh, went after one of the players. I, I didn't write the name down, but I was like, "Okay, the Ducks are playing." It was Manta. Yeah. So D- yeah. Ducks are playing that style of hockey, and usually when they play that style of hockey, good things happen when they they're aggressive. Those dirty ducks, and they start you know chipping in. I was expecting okay, th- this is how this game's gonna go. The Ducks are looking good. Delorier comes over there, he hits his eighty eight miles per hour, and and has a good scrap. It was like okay, now I'm all pumped up, like blood's pumping. Detroit has uh, has let in the most goals in NHL at seventy five. So I'm like okay, this is gonna be a good game. Like, you know, it can easily be a 5-1, 6-1 win. You know, hopefully the Ducks can get this. And they started off doing doing well. Silverberg follows up with his tip-in shot. And it was great. He followed up the play. And, and, and we won the challenge, too. So, I was like, like uh, oh, no, no, it wasn't a challenge. They were, uh, it, it was a whistle thing that they were talking about. And those can't be reviewed. So, right. yeah, you have half the side saying the, that the it was The next goal, the next goal. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Mahura's goal was a challenge that we won. And that was a really good goal. It snuck right between uh, Green and Richie. That little spot just went in and still beat Bernier. I, I thought oh, that goal was amazing. So everyone's happy. Then, of course, Detroit gets one back on the board. You, you give a guy like Hironic, uh, with his cannon of a shot, that much opportunity to shoot nine times out of ten. He's probably going to score if, he, if you give him that outlet right there. And then the Ducks just kind of just fell back and then let the wings, you know, take over and get back in this game. Yeah, there was a, there was a bad calls at the end. And, and one shouldn't have been a penalty at all on Holzer, and that was, that was kind of BS. But still, you can't really argue that one defining fact that's going to, you know, throw the Ducks outward like that. They should have easily cruised past this Detroit team, like the worst in the league, and they still couldn't get it done. And that's when the, the frustration boiled over, like, Okay, what the hell are the Ducks doing? Like, like, do they not want to just play, or are they just calling certain things of what they're doing just to get fans in the seats? Uh, it, it just this one frustrated me the most. Probably not the most of the season, but it probably just was one of their their most frustrating games I, I got to watch. Yeah, I, I think it was because in the beginning, like you talked about, the Ducks got those first two goals. You had uh, Silverberg get that that score. And you thought the whistle was going to be blown, and it wasn't. And the puck's sitting there, and he goes in and he taps it in. And everyone's like, well, what? You know, because uh, the Ducks are playing Bernier. You all remember him, right? Um, and he and he gets that goal. So they're like, okay, cool. We got kind of the benefit of the doubt. They scored. No biggie. You had the uh, coach's challenge on the Mahura goal. They are saying that, you know, Richie interfered with the goalie. But Richie was outside of the crease. So any incidental contact is not goalie interference, uh, according to the rule book. So that goal was good to go. And, and of course, I love it now because you you throw out a coach's challenge, you get it wrong, you get a penalty for delay a game. And, uh, you know, that happened. But then, of course, the Ducks didn't capitalize. If they would have capitalized there and made it 3 nothing, I think they would have taken this game. Just like we talked about, too, uh, when they played Minnesota. They, they had a chance to go up by 3 didn't do it, and they lost that game. And I think the same thing happened here, Eddie. The Ducks had a chance to go up by three. If they would have uh, capitalized on that, that probably would have changed it uh, there. But like you said, in the third period, at the end, they they did some things there. And 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 this is probably one of the moments I'm going to criticize Dallas Akins a little bit. I, I did not like uh, his choice of defensive pairings at the end there. The Ducks had Gooley that had you know recently been called up. He got his penalty for tripping, which that, that was a penalty. There's no way around it. But once that penalty happened, he put Larson out there with Holzer, and then Holzer gets the next penalty, and then he puts uh, Gabranson out there. I just don't understand why Cam Fowler wasn't out there in the final minutes. Detroit even took a timeout during that part. Ducks took a timeout too during that part. So, I mean, if if Fowler was tired, I mean, I, you know, you're down to your, your best top four defenseman is Fowler. And he wasn't on the ice in his last minute and a half. I, I just, to me, I don't understand that. I think that was a, a, a mistake by Aiken's part. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, he's done much better than obviously Carlisle compared to last season. But, I mean, we got to look at everything here. It's not always on the players, right? Sometimes it's on the coaches. So, to me, uh, Holzer got out of position. I didn't think he committed a penalty. It looked like he lift uh, the player's stick, knocked it off the puck. It looked like a, a, a good play to me. It was not hooking, in my opinion. But the problem is, is, why is he out there? Why isn't Fowler out there? It was Holzer and Larson out there. Uh, Fowler should have been one of the two guys out there. That That's my part where I was very upset towards the end, and then it cost the Ducks. And then, of course, they go to overtime and they lose. Um, just frustrating. I just thought the last two minutes wasn't, wasn't – I don't know. I just thought it could have been handled a little bit better, Eddie. Uh, I know I'm being critical of the coach, but and I know you know it's his second you know season or second run at being back in the NHL. But we already know we're down all these defensive men. You have your best guy Fowler on the bench, and you're down six on four. Like what the f? You know, I mean that's just me. I was just very very, I was pissed off. And the the irony of all this is my wife was more pissed off about this game she couldn't even sleep after we got home from the game she was so mad at the last two minutes and how it unfolded uh and and, and the way that they played and and the, the pairings that are put out there um and i'm the one who's usually more into it more upset i was just kind of like over it i would just i turned off my phone i went home and i was just done eddie but a lot of things pissed me off i i didn't i didn't like the call against holzer 
Uh, I didn't like him being out there, though, him and uh, uh, Larson as well. I thought, I don't know what was going on with that. And it just just frustrated me at the end, the last couple of minutes. I just don't have anything else to say. Uh, but like you, the only, I guess the only other thing I will say before you chime in is uh, I agree with you. Yeah, you can't blame those penalties on the Ducks' loss. They put themselves in that position. They weren't clearing the puck. Uh, they were getting turnovers. They were getting hemmed in. And when you kind of play defensive in a shell like that in the final minutes, uh, bad things happen. And that, and that's exactly what did happen, Eddie. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you said. Definitely, but especially about the pairings too. Uh, the only positive thing I can take from after that that the uh, the Red Wings tied it back up was um, – they killed the penalty going into the overtime, and they were controlling the puck and cycling it well on the three-on-three. Three. It's just unfortunate that you know the Red Wings got you know coughed up the puck from them and scored. But I, I did like what I saw when they were playing the three-on-three, three, especially from Kase and Mahura. I think they, they were just transitioning the puck and cycling it around. Probably they came playing keep away from the from the from the Red Wings, and I was like, okay, we're gonna steal a point here, cool. And then all of a sudden. Right when I'm thinking that in my mind, guess who goes and scores? The Red Wings. I'm like, man, uh, you brought up too before we started uh, recording about what you saw when you were at the game and what should have been probably a penalty on Detroit. Yeah, this this is something that I, I went back and rewatched actually the last couple of minutes of this game. A lot of times after the games that we do the podcast, I go back and I either rewatch the YouTube uh, like the kind of the you know shortened game, or I'll go back and watch the actual game just to kind of see what's on the TV because things are on there that people don't see. So if you weren't at the game, you didn't see it on TV. Uh, some Detroit fan threw an octopus on the ice in that final uh, minute and a half or whatnot, and that just really irritates me. Uh, I think it should be a delay a game penalty on Detroit. I'm sorry. I don't care if they're original six team. I don't care if they've been throwing octopuses on the ice for 2,000 years. I, it doesn't matter to me. That should be a penalty. Just like when Nashville throws the catfish out. They did that too when the Ducks uh, played them in the playoffs a couple years back, if you remember that. I'm not a fan of that. I just think it's complete BS. And I think that they should be penalized for that. Yeah, there was a couple fans. They got escorted out at Honda Center and got ejected. I was happy about that. So they didn't get to see Detroit win at the end. But... I, I just don't I, – I have no room for that. I think it's a bunch of crap. I'm sorry. Uh, if a player gets a hat trick and they score and everyone throws hats, I get that. That's one thing. But when you're throwing stuff out there and the the maintenance staff of the facility has to come out and the play is delayed because they have to go pick up a fish, octopus, whatever it is you're going to throw on the ice, I think that should be a penalty. I know the league's not going to do anything about it and they probably don't care what I have to say, but I just think that's BS. And to the fan that brought that in, man, I hope you wash your pants because – that's just disgusting. Putting an octopus in your pants and then throwing it out there on the ice, that's just gross. Sorry, but it's disgusting. Um, you know, Again, I was pissed off at, this, at the end of the game. And, and if that would have been called a delay a game penalty, the Ducks would have won the game, by the way. So it's just something to think about. And again, I'm not saying that that's the reason why they lost. But, and I'm a little adamant right now. I'm probably m- more pissed off than I normally get. But the last two minutes there, I, I was just irritated. And I don't, I don't think there's room for that in the league. I don't care how long it's been going on. I think it's BS. Um, if you disagree, then uh, chime in. I'm all for it. You know, I, I'm down for it. Tell me why I'm wrong, why it shouldn't be a delay a game penalty. But these fans go out there and throw stuff on the ice. And, and you know, kudos to the Detroit fan because that was perfect timing because it gave Detroit extra time to set up and do a play. And guess what? They got the game tying goal out of it. So it was smart on that fan's part. And when you get no penalty other than, oh, you get kicked out of the game and there's only a minute 30 left to go, it's not a big loss to that fan, right? So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get off my uh, my little uh, soapbox here, but that's just the, another added thing that irritated me at the end of this game, Eddie. I just, I was mad, but my wife was even more mad. I just, I just over it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. And. I, I, yeah, you're talking about how people sneak those things in their pants. That's that's disgusting. That that one guy that threw the catfish during the playoffs at Honda Center. Um, Rose. Uh, yeah, uh, that was his name that threw it. No, I just saying it was. Oh, Rose. I just said Rose. I was like, oh, how do you know his name? Like, whoa, good job, Mike. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> I do know some people, but no, I don't know who threw that like, one. Like, <laughs> man, Mike has a hit list. <laughs> don't piss him <laughs> off. <laughs> no. no. Anyways, we get back to the that topic. That dude snuck in that big ass catfish 
what pissed me off about that, I was like, okay, yeah, it, yeah, it's annoying seeing that. Especially a lot of fans don't know the whole tradition of throwing the, the octopi on the on the ice. But that catfish dude, that dude threw it during the U.S. National Anthem. And in my mind, before I saw the video of who did it, I'm like, oh, it's some college kid drunk. Okay, whatever. It's like a freaking almost 50-year-old man. I'm like, bro, you're like 50 years old, bringing in a big-ass catfish and throwing it during the National Anthem. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, I, I don't know what they're, what they're giving over there in Nashville in their water, but that, that was just odd to me. But I, I, I get the frustration of what you said. That give um, that gave the Red Wings a little bit more time to breathe and strategize and kind of get more of a, I guess, a momentum going. So like you said, you know, it sucks and unfortunate for the Ducks, but kudos to that fan. He, he, he picked the, t- the right time to do it, and he probably you know should have been one of the third stars of the game on that. Yeah, exactly. The, the third star should have been that fan for sure. Because like I said, he timed it out well. Throwing it out during the natural anthem, that's just kind of stupid altogether. But yeah, the Detroit fan threw it out during that part. And I mean, that was good timing because they got extra time to set up and run a play. And then they got the game tying goal. So that that's my point about that. And uh, I'll leave it at that. I'll get off my horse. I, I, I've already beat it so much. And if you disagree, then chime at me. I, I, I I'm all for it. I just... I just don't, I don't care. I, yeah, I get it. You know, back then you had to, you know, win eight games in the playoffs. And it was different. The octopus. I get all that. I don't really care. Uh, I, I can't stand Detroit. And I just think that that's a bunch of crap, you know. And if we ever went to Detroit for a game, we should throw a big ass duck on the ice at the final minutes. I mean, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, get a big old rubber duck and throw it at Little Caesars. See how they like it, you know. Throw a box of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd probably get arrested too, Eddie. They'd be like, oh, these guys from Anaheim throwing pizza and ducks on the ice at Little Caesars. You know, but out here, it's not a big deal. You know, whatever. Oh, just just, just leave, leave, the, leave the facility, please. I probably would not so, want to go to jail in Detroit. I, I probably would not want oh, to Oh, no thanks. I don't, I don't want to go there, period, anyways. So, hey, there you go. But anyway, so the, so the Ducks lost this game. Let's, let's get back to the actual stuff. We kind of went on a tangent there. <laughs> I, 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 I was a little pissed off. Uh, about that but anyway so the ducks they still got a point out of this game but they went on a four game losing streak so then we did a poll question because everybody was going nuts we kind of go into this about you know is it panic mode should the ducks make a trade what's happening you know everybody got upset after that game social media was going off as i expected so we put out a poll question while the day we recorded this just to see what people would think about hey okay what do we do do we need to make a trade like you know what's going on is this is this doomsday or what? And it's kind of interesting. You guys are very, very divided about what the Ducks should do. So we did that poll question about making a trade and whatnot. On uh, Facebook, it's uh, 53% to 47 say no, don't do it. Uh, Instagram, it's like 60, 40 say yes. And then on Twitter, it's, it's very similar to Facebook. A little more than half of you are saying no. So it's pretty crazy, Eddie. Um, a lot of the fans are divided on this question. We, we didn't do a poll question last show, and I'm sorry about that. Try to do one every every week when we do one. But I thought this was a good one. I wanted to see what everybody's responses were after these games. And people are very, very divided, Eddie. Uh, almost 50-50 across all the social media platforms. What do you think, you know, uh, as far as it hit the panic button? Or should we just ride this out and then and, and just, you know, whatever happens this season happens? Well, as as far as like the question goes, and, and bringing in big name players to try to, you know, to salvage a a, a season and make up and you know squeak in the playoffs, uh, I, I I'll, I'll say no. From using the sample size of what I've seen so far of the Ducks play, I don't think they're a, cont- a, con- a contending team. Maybe a playoff team, yes, if they can start playing, you know, some hockey to their potential. But I can't see them winning the Stanley Cup. The what they have, the product they have on the ice, it's it just. They're not playing that full 60 minutes. And, like, it, it, you, you can't win a game, especially in the Stanley Cup playoffs. If, if there's a way to, to play more than 60 minutes in the playoffs, the Ducks had to do that. And they're just not doing that. The special teams has been an issue. And consistency of play has been an issue for for back in – well, Boost Boudreaux was the coach. And then Carlisle. So it's you, you really can't blame the coach for that. It's that that's the players – like, I guess that's the players' part. Um if I could see an improvement in the Ducks play and yeah, if they start, you know, scoring more on the power play, uh, they're playing that full game, but they're just getting outplayed and beat. I can take that. Okay, cool. Maybe we have a chance, you know, playoffs are different. 
And, and like, like I said, this is a small sample size. The, the season is just barely beginning. Like we're barely in November. And I mean, Ducks can go in last place and then come January, after January, they can win a bunch of games, get in the playoffs, win the Stanley Cup. Look at the St. Louis Blues. But from, I'm talking about from the games that we watched, and I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of you fans can agree on that. The games that you guys watch too, because you guys watch a lot of games just like us. They haven't really been the best, and you know a lot of people on social media talk about stealing a point, and that, that's what it is. And when you get that far or that close, come playoffs, like those points matter to get in. But once you're in the playoffs, it's do or die. It's not like oh, okay, we just barely got a point. No, it's just, there's no points. You're either gonna win or lose. Period. And I, I just I want the Ducks to find out what they're gonna do and what they decide to do. Like this whole retooling thing. I I, I hate those words. I, I just I, it's it's black and white. You're going to rebuild or you're going to not. Are you going to, you know, that's it. This retooling thing, it just, for me, it just kind of like, it, it's a little fluffer. It gives you a pillow for fans. Like, oh, okay, we're not full rebuild mode. We, you know, we still have a chance. So go ahead and come and, and st- still have your season tickets and still you know, put your butts in the seats. Because if they've said full rebuild, or rebuild, I mean, they're going to lose a lot of uh, season ticket holders. They're going to lose those, you know, people, those fans coming to watch the team. But I really want the Ducks to kind of find out who they are, what their identity is. And, yeah, it's going to take some time to get adjusted to a new system. And, if you know, if, if they can confidently bring in a couple players that can help them win and change the whole atmosphere of the team where they're going to play better and play a full game, get in those hard areas, be physical, and, and you know, give support for Gibson because Cassian hitting Gibson with three consecutive shots, unacceptable. And, and uh, yeah, I, I'd be more critical if I was saying just for that one play, but there's been numerous times and numerous games where lots of players are right in front of our goalie's net and just getting that one, two, three chances are just causing chaos. So it just... I mean, I, I I I don't know, Mike. It's it's really it's frustrating because I don't want to say like okay, just throw in the towel and fold. I mean, yeah, I'm still gonna go as many games as I as I can, and still gonna watch every game. But it's just I I don't know. It's a tough one. Yeah, I, I'm with you as far as trying to play the rest of the season. Uh, we talked about this before the season started. We said, okay, you have a new coach, you have a bunch of young players. Uh, it's going to be an exciting season to watch because there's so many unknowns that are going to happen. So in that part, I, I get it. And and you're sitting there saying, hey, let's just ride this out. Uh, Lindholm should be back soon and see how the team does. Uh, Manson, you know, probably another three, four weeks out somewhere in there uh, and go for it. Um, my thing is, is we talked about trades before like the season got started at the beginning of the season. So for me... I wish the Ducks would have done something before this point. And I think that they would have avoided this. It's too late now, too little, too late, whatever. But when they had the whole uh, Shattenkirk thing, the Falk thing, the, you know, the Ducks were hot on defensemen. They brought in Good Branson, who's, who's been doing okay for the Ducks. He's not been an all star, but he, he's been good. He's not, you know, but not been terrible. He's, uh, you know, as far as the goals for and against, he's been on the, the plus side when you're looking at some of these stats and whatnot. But the Ducks are lacking in top four defensemen, and, th- and that's been the problem. And now you have Manson go out for a while. You have Lindholm go down. So your only top four defenseman is Fowler. So you're stuck. You're like, okay, what do we do now? And that's the problem. You had Gooley, who probably could be a top four defenseman, but he's been in and out in, uh, with injuries. Then you've got everybody else that follows in after that. Uh, Larson, Holzer, Delzato, Goodbranson. They've all been okay or kind of eh at some at some point throughout the season. So you're stuck right here <clears throat> as far as your options on the blue line. And, and it's making it tough. So <clears throat> for me, the Ducks should have made a trade before this. Now I'm kind of where Eddie's at. I think it's almost too late. I, I mean, I, I think if you get uh, Lindholm back, they can still play competitively and and maybe maybe squeeze in at a wild card i don't know it's going to be tough but at this point i might not want them to make a wild card i might want them to <clears throat> get a higher draft pick and that's what some some of the comments you guys have talked about too is hey don't don't go out and and you know trade uh kasha or sprong or richie and all the or some draft picks and, and get a guy just so the ducks can you know make third in the in the pacific and then get knocked out of the playoffs and honestly, I agree with the, the, those of you that are saying that. It makes sense to me. Uh, earlier in the season, I'd say, yes, the Ducks should have made a trade. 
Let's do it. Now I'm at the point where I'm I'm on the other side of the fence now. At, at this point in the season, I say, hey, let's just ride it out and see what the team does. We're kind of going through uh, growing pains as we expected. And I, I don't think if they did make a big trade for someone right now, I don't know that, that, that that's going to help so much. I, I really don't. I, I think for this team, there's some things that got to be figured out. Uh, and we can talk about some of those things. But there, there's a lot of... Uh, stuff that's got to be worked out. I think a big part of it's the special teams. That's been a huge, huge problem with the Ducks. Uh, their power play is only at 8.2%. That's ridiculous. The Ducks have scored 50 goals this year, only four of them on the power play. It's just terrible. Uh, the power play needs some serious, serious help. The penalty kill hasn't been terrible. It's at 79.7%, but you'd like to be over 80%. So for me, a lot of it is that the Ducks can just fix the special teams I think they could be in a wild card spot. So that, that, that's a big part of it for me, Eddie, is trying to work out some of these things. Uh, I, I just don't know. Uh, trying to go out and get a big name player is really going to do anything right now. Uh, maybe they try something at the deadline, but it's also early in the season, too. There's plenty of time to go. Uh, I think once uh, Lindholm's back and then Manson, I, I think the Ducks can make a push uh, to at least try to squeak in. But like I said, some of you out there don't want them to. You you rather them hang out, just kind of feel the season out, let uh, Dallas Aikens figure it out, figure out the personnel, and and go for it next season. Which Eddie and I did say that in the beginning. That we knew the Ducks weren't going to win the division. We knew they weren't going to compete for the Stanley Cup. That's not a big secret. So you know what do you do here? You cut your losses and and try to you know figure out who's better for what spots. Or do you try and go get it, like some big name player, thinking that that guy is going to solve everything? I, you know, Eddie, I'm kind of with you. I don't think if they go get one guy that that's going to really change the season that much. Yeah, it just for me, I want them to improve in their play first before they go out and make a, a you know, sign a, a or trade for a big name player. I want them to be able to, you know, kind of keep up with teams, you know, beat teams that they should be beating, uh, teams like Edmonton that are that the Ducks are out skilled on to keep up with them, use their speed, use their youth to to keep up and not not make those those simple mistakes that just cost them goals. I, I want to see that improve before they go out and try to get, you know, a big name player and make a push. Yeah, I mean, things can change. Like I said, this is only November. Come January, February ish, you know, things can happen. Ducks can go on a, a, a heat streak and they can find their momentum and groove and they can really start, you know, benefiting from this new coaching system. You never know at hockey. It just that's what's the great the great thing about it. You can, you know, football and baseball, basketball. You can kind of like see which powerhouse teams are gonna are kind of go and, and make their mark. But with hockey, it's so unpredictable. But like as far as making a big splash right now, I'd say no. I say write it out. Let the team figure out what the team is is first and have, see if they can improve in all these hor man these horrible stats. Just hearing him you talk about them and then looking down at my notepad right now and seeing them on paper i'm like man it's bad um i know a lot of people are asking about taylor hall because that rumor was you know swirling about the ducks weeks ago um his agent informed the devils that he's not going to be talking or not going to sign a contract extension during the season so that kind of means that he wants to test the free agent the free agent market out which i don't blame him it's it's a unique opportunity for for players to kind of you know pick and choose where exactly you know where they want to go and have all these teams you know pretty much whining and dining him like you're a college athlete or a high school athlete trying to get into a college and you have all these colleges coming at you and wanting you to to go on their team so um i wouldn't want the ducks to give up a bunch of assets for someone like yeah it'd be cool to have him it'd be great he'd be an instant upgrade to our team and especially our offense production but to give up a lot for pretty much a rental player no it doesn't really fly with me like unless unless we come january and we were really making like a push for you know to be in a Stanley Cup contending team, like you know, and that little rental player can can push us over that edge and win us the cup. Then yeah, then go ahead and do it because it's worth it. But as far as right now, no. Uh, there's other players too we talked about that the Ducks could have gotten the help with that front net presence and, and a little bit more grit was uh, um, Jamie McGinn and Troy Brower. Brower just they signed player tryouts with the St. Louis Blues. That kind of confused me because they didn't re-sign Patrick Maroon, which he would have took, uh, you know, I guess a lower contract as he did with the Tampa Bay Lightning over there, and he, and even the Ducks could have used someone like Maroon to to get in that front area and provide that that grit 
and play that, I guess, that dirty duck style. Because, like I said, when the ducks play that hard physical style, it usually ends in, you know, good for them. So I was so frustrated and surprised it didn't end that well with Detroit. Yeah, I mean, there's a few names that we mentioned out there that the Ducks could have added and got, you know, quote unquote, on the cheap because we know that Murray likes to do those kind of things. And those are some guys. I mean, McGinn was on the Ducks before and, and he, he did OK with the Ducks. He was a good net presence. And that's part of the thing that I think is wrong with this team in general is that lack of net you know presence. And that's when you look at the stats and there's people out there that are going to post charts they're going to tell you that plus and minus is important. They're going to say that this stat, uh, the goals for stat or the goals against stat, you know, is the thing you need to look at. I'm not going to tell you that. What I'm going to tell you is you need to look at everything. Look at the plus minus. Look at the five on five play. Look at the special teams play. Look at everything. So another part of this mix, not just the special teams as we talked about briefly, but you do look at the puck possession numbers. You look at Corsi and Finwick. You know that those uh, also take into account uh, the shots missed. Uh, Corsi uh, also adds in block shots. But you look at both those stats, the Ducks are around 47%. That's not good, okay? You want to be over 50%. You want to be controlling the play and controlling the uh, opportunities more than your opponent. And the Ducks aren't doing that during 5-on-5 five five play. They did okay 5-on-5 five five play the last couple games. But for the season, they haven't been. And then, of course, as we said, special teams. So you got to look at all that stuff and add it all together. Take you know the totality of all the facts, basically, and all the stats. And with this team, we've seen uh, the Henrik, Raquel, and Silverberg line go in there and get in front and score. And they had a couple great goals on this homestand. But outside of that line, the, the rest of the team really hasn't been doing a whole lot. Uh, Getzloff has been shooting the puck more. And getting more goals, which has been good to see. Uh, and that's really that's it, though, for the offense. The, the team hasn't been digging deep in there. And when it comes to the power play, definitely they're not good doing that. So that that's a huge issue here. They're not controlling the tempo more than the other team five on five or on special teams. Uh, you know, and, and like I said, only four power play goals in the whole season. They're, you know, only Ottawa's worse. I mean, that's not good. I mean, you're not converting. I, I remember going to some of the games this season. And fans sit next to me are like, "Can we decline the power play?" I mean, that, I mean, that's that's bad. I mean, there, there's, and I'm laughing because I'm like, I, I, I don't have an argument. I'm like, yeah, decline the power play. I mean, we're, we we score more goals five on five than we do on the power play. I mean, but it shouldn't be that way. The Ducks need to capitalize, and they're not. So uh, it's a big part of it. There's there's a lot of stuff going on. I, I, you know, I know some of you. I saw some of the comments are like, I'm not going to watch the Ducks anymore. You know, they're losing, blah, blah, blah. I, I tell yourself, you know, just, just calm down. There's ebbs and flows in the season. They, they win some, lose some. It's early. You know, we're, we're just coming up on about, a, a you know, a fourth of the season. There's still three-fourths of the way to go. So don't, don't write it out yet. They still had a decent start. This team still is better than last year. I mean, come on. We had Carlisle as the coach last year, and, the, and there was all kinds of issues going on. At least with this team, they, they're out there hustling. Uh, they're just not taking uh, advantage of some of their opportunities. They're not getting in front of the net and they're not converting on the power play. Uh, those are the two biggest things that we're seeing there and they're getting stuck. And, and when you have a depleted blue line, I mean, what are you going to do? You have one top four defenseman. Any team that only has one top four defenseman is not going to play well. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. And that's only the last two games. And you think about it, they got one point, you know, possibly should have had two out of four. So, I mean, there are still some positives. The fact that they have a thin blue line and uh, that they're able to, you know, compete. But I, I get it. You're frustrated when you, you thought you had this team and then in the final minutes, things go south. You know, it, it's frustrating. But we'll keep doing the poll questions and whatnot and keep letting you guys weigh in. Remember, this is your show. So um, that's how, how we'll play it. But uh, I think another part of this too, Eddie, that we wanted to talk about, we'll talk about the goals a little bit too, is that... Uh, Comtois was the next one to get a timeout. He got sent down. He didn't play in that game against Detroit. Uh, remember Max Jones went on his little timeout, as I said. Uh, and I saw a lot of people upset about that. But I kind of understood. Um, if certain players aren't performing, I, I that's one thing I do like about Dallas Akins. If he's got guys that are waiver exempt and he thinks they need a timeout, he's, he's pushing them to do a timeout. So that part I do like. 
Uh, and he did go down the goals. The goals have a bunch of games coming up here, and I know you want to talk about it, Eddie. They, they've actually started winning some games. They did lose recently, but oh, it's, it's funny. The Ducks have been going down, not playing well, and now the goals have been playing better. So, Oh, yeah, the goals went on a, a four-game winning streak. That was cool because they started off 0-6. So it's 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 fun to see the goal starting to catch their their groove and kind of you know they're dealing with the, a lot of roster changes and a new coach too so they're finding a system. Stolarz has been playing amazing. He's the, the goaltender with those four consecutive wins. Yeah, he, he's been playing pretty lights out. Ryan Johnston made his debut uh, November tenth when the goals beat the San Jose Barracudas three to one. So uh, welcome officially to the goals now. So he, he was a trade for my favorite player, future considerations. On that one, <laughs> um, they were undefeated in November. Unfortunately, yesterday, you know, more bad news when the goals lose six three to Stockton Heat. So when you're looking at the Ducks losing, like, oh, let me check, how, you know, how the goals are doing, and they lose, like, oh man. Sometimes you know those two negatives don't equal a positive on on that part. But uh, it, it's it's good to see them. I mean, if I had it my way, I'd rather the goals lose and the Ducks win. If it's gonna be like this the whole season, like if they both can't win, <laughs> but. I mean, it's good to see them finally catching their groove and playing well. So, that you know, that's as far as pretty much that's pretty much the goals news. Nothing really significant besides you know, the I guess the the revolving door of call ups and sent downs with Benoit and Mahura, and then now Comtois is going down. Yeah, Benoit got kind of kind of shafted. I guess he got called up, and I heard he was really excited. <laughs> he didn't even get to play, so he got <laughs> sent back down. That, that that sucks, for lack of a better term. You're like, yeah, I got called up, and then you know, Lindholm goes out, and Gooley and Mahura come up, and like, oh, bye bye, go back, man, take the shuttle back down to San Diego. Like, dang, that kind of oh man. But uh, real quick before we change the second half of the show, uh, this one is sponsored by Cool Hockey. Uh, we had George. He won a $200 gift card for the month of October for being a Patreon member. Uh, sign up at patreon.com slash ducks and pucks. You can win game tickets and gift cards. So just remember that. Um, cool Hockey is a, a very good at doing their jerseys and whatnot, and they're a sponsor of us, and we appreciate uh, their support. So with, the, I guess, the second half or maybe the, the tail end of the show, we got some league news, and there's some some big stuff going on, Some a lot of stuff to talk about. So... Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Don Cherry first. Uh, Eddie will have a little bit of small tidbits for you kind of in the middle, and then we'll talk about Kovalchuk at the end. So uh, we'll start off with the, the big, big topic, the one that's got everybody going nuts, Eddie. Sportsnet told Don Cherry to pound sand and get lost. Oh, no. Uh, uh, what's that hashtag? Uh, pack your shit. That's the hashtag. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pack your shit. So sorry if I cuss, but yeah, pack your shit. Anyways... He, uh, he got booted uh, for some comments that he said, and I'll read them to you because the, I, uh, the media likes to put out things, right, and twist and turn things like a, like a ride at Disneyland, right? So uh, that's how they are. But anyways, this is what he, he said, and then people blew up. We, we asked you guys for some comments uh, about this. We're going to read some of your comments as well because everybody wanted to weigh on, on this one. But he said during the, uh, the coach's corner, he said... Uh, Quote, you people love, you that come here, whatever it is, you love our way of life. Uh, you love our milk and honey. At least you could buy a couple of bucks. I'm sorry, you could pay a couple of bucks for poppies or something like that. These guys paid for your way of life that you enjoy in Canada. So then that went out and then kaboom, everybody went nuts. Uh, Cherry was fired like shortly after that and everybody went crazy. But... The comments were just insane after this, and I was surprised because I thought a lot of people were going to be against him, but then I saw a lot of people for him, too. Uh, interesting. So I'll give you the first crack at it, Eddie. Uh, what did you think by his comments? Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about if I disagree or, or agree with exactly what he said. Uh, I, I like to live my life uh, bar etiquettes, you know, no race, no religion, no politics. That's how. Except I, for know, hockey, hockey's yeah, our religion. Like, no hockey, like hockey's different. Like hockey, I love, but I, I think there's a time and place for everything, and he chose the wrong time and place to voice his opinion, which I I, I respect his opinion about veterans. I mean, I'm a veteran, so that's always going to be number one in my heart for all my brothers and sisters out there, for all our allied countries. Uh, I mean, even those countries too, like North Korea. I'm pretty sure there's brainwashing going on, and, and those those soldiers over there, whatever they call them, have the best intentions that they're just being brainwashed. 
but I mean, someone that's, that's pretty much you know giving up their you know, their they're pretty much the life for for the service of their country. I respect that. I, I just don't think that he took you know coach's corner. He's been doing it since eighty two. I mean, people don't tune in to watch coach's corner or watch hockey to to get all the world the real world politics and all the stuff that's going on to bleed into hockey. This is our escape. This is our bubble just to like, okay, to just wind down and relax. You don't want to turn on a hockey game and hear, you know, like something about politics or something about, you know, like the news or this and that. No, you want to just tune your mind out and watch hockey. And I think unfortunate for him, he just picked the wrong time to do it. And regardless, it's, you know, you have a, you know, you're on a social platform. Like you have, you know, your immediate personality. I mean, even me on Ducks and Pucks, like I still have a social responsibility because we have a platform and we have a lot of fan base and sponsors that follow us. And if you think players don't uh, listen to the podcast or don't have ghost accounts that follow it too, uh, they do. And, and they, they read, not necessarily, you know, they follow everything Ducks and Pucks say, but they follow all the, the media outlets out there too and, and other blogs that are out there. It's just you have that responsibility just to to stick to your job and report what's what is your job is the news. I mean, I, I mean, Mike and I are really good friends, and you know, he's he's like my brother. But if I'm jumping on the show talking about my, you know, any religious stuff or you know the politics or what's going on in, in the world, I mean, he has a brand to, you know, to protect. And Ducks and Pucks is a it's a great brand. It's it's a, it's one of the best for a reason. And I, I, I would expect to get, you know, Mike pull me aside like, hey, you know what? I can't have you on the show or part of Ducks and Pucks anymore. You know, I apologize for that. But, you know, business is business. And I mean, I, I love Ducks and Pucks. So and I, I really, you know, I, I really am with this brand. So I would never do that. Um, I calmed down a lot. Like when I first got back from the military, I still had that mindset of just not having zero filter. And then I know I was kind of a, you know, when I started joining Ducks and Pucks doing things, I kind of like freelance, like writing things here and there, but not really, really part of it. I know Mike kind of hit the chance because, you know, some of the stuff I was posting was just really out there and I had zero filter. So I had to kind of change my mindset and, and kind of put the brand first and put, you know, my personal feelings aside about other topics and just focus on, on what is, you know, what is hockey and what is Ducks hockey. That's it. So, I mean, that's as far as my take. I mean, is he wrong? I don't know. Is he right? I don't know. That that That's ambiguous. That's up for, for anyone, your personal feelings. But the only thing I disagree with is how he used hockey's platform to kind of kind of express that. Yeah, if you want to show your, your, your love for veterans like we do, like, you know, we'll sit here and talk, you know, thank you, you know, for Veterans Day and things like that. But, but we're not going to sit here and tell people they should be patriarch. They should do this. No, that that's your personal freedom. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in everyone's freedom of speech and you can do what, you know, whatever you want, but sometimes your actions have consequences. Yeah. I mean, not everybody is going to buy a poppy in Canada or not everybody in the U S is going to put out a flag. Maybe they can't afford one, or maybe you live in an apartment where you can't hang a flag. I mean, I don't know, you know, everybody's situation is different. So I, I think his overall message saying that he wanted people to be patriotic and support the troops. I think that part was fine. I just think when he started singling out a group of people, he didn't say the word immigrant, but he implied immigrant in his statement. And I think that's where it turned south. But like you said, Eddie, it's what, why are we talking about politics or you know patriotism or not patriotism or elections or any of this stuff, religion, any of that? Like, Hockey is the thing that I go to, just like you said, to escape. I go there to have fun, watch a game. Uh, I hang out with a lot of people. I know a lot of people around the sport, and we just have a good time. We don't we don't care if you like Trump or you hate Trump. You know what I mean? Or you or you like the Clintons or you hate the Clintons. I, I like I don't really care. I, I don't talk that with people. I don't talk about religion or politics. I just talk about the game and talk about you know who's playing well and why are they not playing well? Like we've been talking about the Ducks lately. And I think that's the big key. And I'll, and I'll read a couple of comments here. I think this kind of reiterates what a lot of you are thinking out there. We had um, uh, Thomas said, this is kind of what Eddie said too, is that uh, he was glad that he got removed. He said, uh, quote, he's made the intermission unwatchable for me uh, for a long time ago because of what he says. So like Eddie said, the people aren't tuning in to watch that. No one wants to, to see those discussions going on during the intermission about uh, you know, certain views that have nothing to do with the actual game and analyzing how players are doing or questionable plays or rules or whatever uh, when you're going off on a tangent like that. Uh, an another one I think that Daniel kind of talked about this and it goes in line with what I said is 
Uh, quote, if he wouldn't have made it about immigrants, no one would have batted an eye. He took away from promoting patriotism and the troops and turned it into something else. And I think that's exactly, it hits the nail on the head there. I, I, I think he had the right idea, but he presented it and worded it very, very poorly. Um, and another one we had is uh, Alex. He also talked about, you know, time to clean house, get TV people who understand today's game. And I, I think that's an important part. He also talked about uh, Carolina and how everyone's big on what's going on. You remember Don Cherry was really upset about that, those bunch of jerks, and how that was more of a positive than a negative. And I, I agree. You have some people that are out of touch. And with Don being in there for so long, I, I think he did get a little bit out of touch. So uh, it's an unfortunate situation for him. But uh, hey, Eddie, uh, you and I talked about let's bring in Ilya Brzgalov, man. He should be the next one. <laughs> we threw we threw that out there, and everybody jumped on that one. They were like, "Hell yeah, let's bring him in." So that's my choice. Now, if I have an opinion about something, I'm saying let's bring in the Briz, baby. Oh man, that would be awesome. That those ratings would go through the roof. I mean, you, I mean, forget politics and hockey. He's gonna talk about. <laughs> God knows what. How he t- <laughs> Outer space. I mean, and you know what? I would tune in and watch that. He throws a podcast up just talking, rambling about paint on wall and how leaves are green. <laughs> I'm not even like, cool. I'm taking notes. Leaves are green, said Briskalov. Like, man, <laughs> that's funny. But, I mean, you know, to touch on a few comments too, Mike. Uh, Michael, too, he's, uh, he, he didn't think it was a bad thing, but he said he, uh, you know, he uses that day for his brother. And then uh, um, Lisa also mentioned, too, it's a matter of interpretation. Um, I just barely switched my – I was a journalism ma- major. Now I'm going to, like, a big boy college, my university. So I switched to public relations. And the reason why I switched for things like this, damage control. Like what Don Cherry said, you know, Sportsnet had to do, like, damage control. They had to have a person, which I'm majoring in, to go in there and kind of pick pick and choose words and, and kind of, like, put out a statement. So, I mean, that was kind of, like – cool to see you know now that i studied i'm studying public relations to kind of like understand how they break down like things like that but i mean like i said before just to go back you have a you have a personal responsibility and yeah like i'm not on tv or anything i'm doing the podcast and i'm i'm never going to post anything you know of any of my personal opinion on ducks and pucks uh, anywhere but even like on my personal pages now facebook and instagram and twitter I'll watch what I post and I won't post anything because I still, you know, like my name represents ducks and pucks and that represents something way greater than, than, it, than I'm, than I am. So it's like, I, I use my, my personal stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of things I want to say. Like, like, Oh man, I, I was in the military and, and I play, I play beer league hockey. So our conversation in that locker room, Oh my God, I'd probably be in jail <laughs> or something. That's just the, the the freaking 12 guys I play with and the, the couple girls I play with are just as bad too. So it's like everyone <laughs> in that locker room. But yeah, I just kind of clean it up. And you know, with the exception of animal abusers and child molesters, and yeah, I'll start posting my personal page. Those because I don't think anyone's going to care or, or you know, no one's going to go and tell Mike, like, hey, he's, he's going out of control. But it's just when you take a role like this, no matter how – you know, if you have 500 people following you or if you have millions of people following you, you have to kind of – you, you kind of have to change your, your outlook on how you do things and how you post. You know, I'm not saying be a robot or a sheep, but you, you have a social responsibility to kind of – just kind of bite your tongue at times and, and time and place. If you want to talk about that, I mean, go talk about that on your off time. Start a, a podcast away from hockey and do that. But don't do it on a, like a, a platform like that, especially – coach's corner it's been around the 1980s or or when he started was 82 and it's big in canada i just you know it's unfortunate he got fired what i do respect though about him is he got fired instead of just him putting his tail between his legs and and you know pretty much giving out a half-assed fake apology no he stood by what he said and and i can respect that because i rather have someone uh, have you know stand by their word instead of just you know throwing us a lie and just kind of saying sorry just to say it yeah, I mean, if he really felt sorry about it and he did it, then I get it. But like you said, I I rather whatever whichever way he was gonna go afterwards, you know, just be you, man. I mean, he said, hey, this is what I said, and that's what I meant. So I mean, okay, I mean, yeah, not that you agree or disagree, but I mean, he's not being fake. 
So you can at least give him a little bit of credit for that part of it. But anyways, he's out of the mix now. We'll see uh, if there is a replacement or not. Brzgalov. Uh, yeah, yeah, Brzgalov, right? The uh, the astronaut, that's that's who we're, our number one pick is. And a lot of you agreed. So we'll go with that, uh, hopefully. But um, we have a couple other little things we'll talk about uh, around the league. And I think... Uh, we talked about sponsors and things like that, and I think, Eddie, you want to talk about uh, the animal care stuff a little bit. We kind of have another announcement to make here of uh, another partnership that we're doing. Yeah, I'm really excited about this, and I was talking to representatives over there, a really nice girl, uh, communicating via email. And I really wanted to use the platform that we have to kind of give back and kind of shed light to, you know, and give give those without a fighting chance some hope to get adopted and, and find loving homes. and. Something just really stuck to my heart was, you know, um, you know, shelters and all these dogs that, that are just dumped there and euthanized. And I was a dog trainer. I, I love dogs. I, I love dogs more than people at times. But so I just I went ahead and reached out to the OC Animal Care, especially that I know Cogs is gone and the, the whole Cogs and Dogs thing. So I actually wanted to do something. And, and, you know, I was lucky enough where they want to just join in a partnership. So. I mean, uh, we're just going to promote, you know, the Orange County Animal Care. Uh, if you guys, you know, listening, go ahead and shoot them a follow. Uh, go ahead and retweet, share their, their posts to get some animals adopted. It's for a good cause. Uh, we plan to do, uh, I'm planning to do an official announcement by tomorrow. We have a giveaway for this. So if you go ahead and uh, we're going to post some rules for the giveaway, but I'm giving uh, a jersey for my personal collection, a replica Mighty Ducks uh home jersey the darker one so i guess it would be a way if that era so i'm gonna go ahead and give that away tomorrow but i'm really pr- uh, proud and and it's amazing to announce that we have a oc animal care as part of our our, our team now we're going to partner up with them so you'll see our game day programs it's, instead of saying uh present it by it we're going to have it to dedicate it to and the game things we're just going to uh, do an animal of the week whichever animal of the week they have we're going to help promote that and if you guys you know if you guys can adopt, go ahead. Cool. If not, if you guys just go ahead and share, I mean, yeah, that's perfect enough. Uh, as far as donation goes, too, um, you know, if you guys can donate to them, that'd be awesome. A dollar, five dollars, whatever. If not, just you sharing is good enough. So, really, we're really happy to announce that, and I'll be posting an official giveaway tomorrow for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm happy about this too. Uh, dogs and cats have been a big part of my life growing up, and even now, still today. So. Uh, and, and that's actually, I have my cat, I call it the duck cat because she's a calico, but uh, got her from um, the uh, OC animal shelter. So uh, it's, it's something close to us. And like you said, Coglano's gone, so the, there's not really a specific person on the team to do it. So I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, just another partnership. We've been kind of trying to build a lot of uh, different things this season. It's been going pretty well. So I think it's definitely something that's positive and hopefully you guys are receptive to that. Uh, with that, I guess, uh, Eddie, you want to touch on a couple things uh, around the league before we get to uh, Kovalchuk and we wrap up the show? Oh, definitely. Uh, if you guys remember uh, St. Louis player Fabry, he, uh, if you guys don't remember him, he tore an ACL on his left knee. He was out the whole 2016-17 season, and then he re-injured it and had to sit out again. Well, he got traded to the – oh, no, he, he came back last season. He played for the Blues. He won the Stanley Cup. He re-signed. And his agent talked to management saying, hey, if my player is not getting, you know, an impact role on the team or is not being in the lineup regularly or being used to what his potential is, if they can trade him. And, they, you know, during the signing, yeah, you know, we'll take that into consideration. They'll do it. Well, it turns out that they stuck to their word. Uh, he wasn't being played. Tarasenko went down with an injury. And he wasn't uh, being played at all. So they ended up trading him to the Detroit Red Wings for Jacob Della Rose. And what's interesting about Della Rose, he was picked up off waivers from Montreal by Detroit. So basically Detroit gave away a free player and got a potential a first round pick and with a lot of potential. And he's having success. He had like three points his first two games with, with the Red Wings. So, I mean, someone that come off an injury like that, I, I wish him all the best of luck. Uh, as far as uh, other league news, um, Sergei Zuboff's number 56 number is going to be retired by the Dallas Stars next season. He's be, he'll be the sixth player in franchise history to have their number retired. All-time leader in games played, goals, assists, points, plus-minus, game-winning goals, shots on goal, time on ice. Um, it's, he's going to be the first defenseman in franchise history. and uh, Hall of Famer player will be inducted on the 18th. So um, he leads uh, all-time Russian leader in assists for defensemen. 
So congratulations to him, and you know his number deserves to be up there. Another uh, uh, league news is Perry's Corey Perry. If you guys remember him, he used to play for the Ducks. <laughs> he'll be <laughs> he'll be having uh, skating in his one thousand game today. So uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna release his podcast, but he's playing right now. He'll be playing right now, and today will be his uh, thousandth game. So congratulations to that. Uh, Nick Foligno, if you guys uh, haven't heard, he got suspended for three games. Uh, he took a headshot against Avalanche's Belmar, and th- there's no question about it. He extended his elbow at the suspension, and I don't think a lot of people, you know, were arguing that. Even you know, Blue Jackets fans are just like, okay, we see it, we get it. He got three games. As far as uh, other league news, too, uh, the Spit and Chicklets podcast with uh, Biz, uh, uh, Paul Bissonnette and Ryan Whitney. And um, I guess they uh, they had some players, TJ Galliardi and Stapleton, on their show talking about lifestyles in Russia. Well, this pissed off a former NHLer and coach, Andre Nazarov. He's uh, first said he, uh, that Galliardi should be arrested on site when he goes to Russia, and he should be locked in solitary confinement with no bathroom, and just kind of, you know, for talking about Russia that way. And then recently, he was quoted saying that. He hired two Russian spies and gave them boarding passes to come to America to confront the Spit and Chicklets guys. It's like, man, those Russian guys don't, you know, they don't, they don't play around. Like, man, that's kind of scary. But it's kind of funny too that you know he's letting these guys on the Spit and Chicklets podcast kind of like, you know, like, dude, just relax. Like, they're just doing it. They talk crap. That's part of their show, and you, you're taking it to heart. But I mean, if you love your country that much, that's little overzealous for me i'm not gonna hire people they talk about bad about america to go and, and talk to them but to each his own um uh just one more thing too solani's book if you haven't if you guys haven't checked it out or bought it uh it's on sale on amazon i know a lot of people only thought you can get it like at barnes and nobles or the ducks but amazon does sell it for 28 dollars. i read it this weekend it's a great book i did a write-up about it uh should be posted soon uh, we also have a giveaway that we're going to do, a signed copy of Slani's book. So stay tuned and follow the show and and the rest of the social media, and we'll go ahead and post that shortly. As far as the other big league news now, Mike, uh, Elio Kovalchuk. Do you want to start that off, Mike? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, Russians and spitting chiclets <laughs> and, and all this craziness over there. I, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't talk about Kovalchuk. They might come after us, too. Russia's uh, awesome. I like Russia. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Eddie Richard, Ducks and Bucks, Russia's cool. Don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna start getting some uh, you know red flags with the little gold logo on there. Right, you know what? You know around. what? My name is Ross. I do that octopi on the ice. I don't. So there you go. <laughs> go after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all we're all for Russia. Okay, okay. No, I just uh, uh, just interesting because we talked about when the Kings got Kovalchuk, and you know a lot of people are, or some people are like, oh, well, the Ducks should have got him, or other teams are out there saying, oh, they should have got him, whatever. And you and I are like, hell no, we don't want this fool. And uh, now it's kind of come to head. You know, he's he's getting the boot. I guess there's a lot of like uncertainty. What's going to happen? Like. He's not going to be playing with the team, but he can practice with the team. Like, it's just all kinds of confusion. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but it, Eddie, it just sounds like his days are numbered in L.A. for sure. Oh, yeah, I think it's more of a scare tactic. He has a no-movement clause, so I, I think they, they went and tried to see if he'll move it, and he said no, so I guess they got upset. And I, This is all speculation. I'm guessing on my part by reading what he has in his contract. He does have a bonus coming December 15th. I think it's like $5 million plus. I think Bob McKenzie or one of the analysts put it out. Uh, put that out, out there. Um, I, I don't know if they're waiting for that date to pass to trade him. It's going to be hard to trade. He does have a no movement clause for this season. Next season, he has a limited one where he can submit seven teams that he can be traded to. Uh, he did say, he's he's been quoted saying he does want to win the Stanley Cup. So, I can't see him going to teams like like Ottawa that has the cap space. I can just you know take some you know take his whole cap and get some draft picks from LA to take his cap. So if he gets traded, it's going to be on his court this season, and it's going to likely be to a Stanley Cup contending team. And the Kings are definitely going to have to eat some salary. If they don't eat salary, they're going to have to throw in some uh, prospects or draft picks because it's just, it's six point two five million uh, in his average salary. He's played seventeen games this season. Only nine points. It's not cutting it. He's really overpaid, and he doesn't seem like he can keep up with 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 the new game, the speed of the NHL anymore. I mean, back in his heyday, he was, you know, he he was able to. He was fast, a great player, great scorer, but 
he's just not the same player anymore. So, I mean, I hate to say I told you so. I, I posted this right when that signing happened. A lot of my friends that are Kings fans on Facebook jumped on me. Oh, no, he's going to show you wrong. No, he's a scorer. Watch this, blah, blah, blah. And I posted recently, like, hey, I hate to say I told you so, but I kind of did. So, like you said, his days are numbered in L.A., which is interesting, though. They don't see him in quote, unquote, his uh, for, foreseeable future. So, But he can practice with the team, but he can't play that. That I don't know. That's weird. Because you're just kind of not letting him play. His trade value is going down he, even more than it is. But, I mean, it's L.A., so good for them. I, I hope they <laughs> I hope they trade him for uh, another crappy player and just ruins their system. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I don't understand that whole thing of what they're doing over there because if you're going to try to get this guy some more value and whatnot, he's not been performing so you're just not going to play him at all i i you know i i, I don't know it just does, doesn't make sense to me but going back to like the financial part of it this is why we were like what the heck when it happened uh kopitar makes 10 million a year and dowdy makes 11 million those those are their two big guns right and then kopachek's sitting at just over 6 million uh you know he's making more than dustin brown jeff carter quick I mean, really? You guys paid this guy more money than all those guys? I mean, all right, whatever. I mean, LA's just imploding. Uh, you know, we talk about the Ducks and what's going on with them and how they've been on this losing streak. But if you want to feel better, just go look at the Kings and you can just go, you can just go, ha ha, like on the Simpsons, right? I mean, look, look what's going on with them. They're a complete mess. Uh, Quick's not had a good year. Uh, they're just discombobulated all over the place. And now they're stuck with this guy with $6 million uh, for this season and next season. Um, I, I don't know. Like like Eddie said, I mean, whatever. It's the Kings and, and you know they can implode as much as they want because I can't stand them either, just as much as Detroit and Chicago. So um, they're going to have to try and figure it out. But I, I, I'll just tell you right now, I don't think that they're handling it the right way. So good luck to them on trying to get that one ironed out, Eddie. Yeah, there has to be something internally, that something more to the story that hasn't been yep, ironed out. Exactly. I just can't see any team telling a player, you can't play. Okay, I get it. If you're trying to trade him, you want to get injured, there's a trade you know, happening. Okay, but you can't play, but you can practice. So, yeah, you can risk getting injured in practice. I don't know. There's something that hasn't been said. And both, you know, it's tight-lipped. I'm pretty sure these media analysts out there that like to, to poke around and find things, they'll find it. So it's just I'm looking forward to see how that goes down, but you know I'm glad I'm glad he's not I'm glad the Ducks didn't sign a player like that because you know he's just he, you can tell he wasn't really going to do anything for the Kings and you know we were both right and a lot of fans that that chimed in on that too when that signing happened and you know they're right as well. I mean as far as if the Ducks go in like a full rebuild mode, I would say hey go uh, offer you know offer to take Kovalchuk in a six million dollar salary just shoot us over a first a second round pick and a few prospects we'll take it i mean they're gonna have a a top number one you know top five pick regardless because i don't see them having any success this season that's joking yeah, too. i was we'll, joking like before people were like oh he wants Kovalchuk. no no i'm saying it's a joke because we can get a couple you know if we can get them to give us prospects and first round picks just to take over a salary for a couple of years i mean that's that's always good yeah, exactly. And uh, we'll just keep our eye on that and we'll see what happens. But uh, real quick to wrap up the show, I uh, just want to let you know that our giveaway was uh, for the Sharks game this week. Uh, Rita won. She got a couple of Sharks choking shirts as well. You can check that out on tpnhockey.com. We're also going to have a watch party coming up uh, this Monday the 18th at 4 o'clock at El Ranchito in Orange. And we want to give a special shout out to Tim Lynn. He uh, did a little voting there, and he put down uh, Ducks and Pucks as uh, his favorite uh, media source other than the Ducks. So I thought that was pretty cool, Eddie. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Thank you for that. That was cool. I really appreciate comments like that. And uh, uh, when you guys come up to me and and always just tell us how good of a job we're doing or your comments and your shares, you taking the time to read what we write and listen to the show, that really means a lot. We appreciate it. There's so much work that we put into this. There's – like. Hours and hours of work by researching everything, confirming what you have, and then triple checking to make sure it's accurate, and just putting the effort in designing things and getting ready for the show and getting your game day stuff preparations, being you know on your phone constantly during the game, missing plays because you want to put something out, and you know just just being there to to be your source and put all the you know ducks information in in one. So you know, thank you for Tim and, and, and everyone else that that supports Ducks and Pucks and that, that that shows your love. We love you guys too. Thank you. 
And that's going to do it. We'll wrap it up. We'll be back next week. And hopefully the Ducks uh, get some wins under their belt instead. All right? Let's go Ducks.